have to hit the button to talk. That's a question we ought to ask. Hey, Joel, do we hit the button to talk, or does it just come out on its own? I don't know. Do they need to hit buttons or anything? Nope. Right on. So watch your background cough. So. <laughs> All right, well, it's 5 o'clock. Uh, good evening, ladies and or is it 5 o'clock? It says 530. <laughs> We're going to start at 5 o'clock. So, <laughs> so uh, well, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the Burlington City Council Forum conducted by the Greater Burlington Partnerships Government Relations Committee. Uh, thank you all for joining us tonight. My name is Joel Siren. Uh, I'm with Edward Jones here in town and a member of the Government Relations Committee. I'll be your moderator for this evening. Our timekeeper is Vince Copeland with the South Hill Neighborhood Association. In the interest of time and fairness to the other candidates, I'm going to ask each candidate to observe Vince's signal and stop your response when the time is up. Uh, the forum will consist of rounds of questions. Each response time will be 90 seconds per question. The order of response will be rotated so that each candidate has the opportunity to, the, to be the first to answer a question. Uh, the candidates have not seen the questions in advance. Um, and uh, this evening, the candidates have been placed in alphabetical order. First, Robert Christer. Kreitzer. Kreitzer, thank you. Uh, Bill Maupin and Christopher Repke. Great. Great. Uh, so to start with, if you could just introduce yourselves uh, and also please tell us the why behind your candidacy. Robert, sure. we'll start with you. Sure. Um, I'm Robert Kreitzer. I live on uh, 810 North 5th, so I'm, I'm just up the hill here. Um, I want to represent the city of Burlington. I think that I'm great at building relationships with with the people around me and I, I think that um, I'm a good listener and I think that I understand some of the concerns the community has and and how we can address those concerns in a productive manner um, I don't always have to be right and I'm not afraid to admit that I'm wrong about certain things so that's where the listening comes in if there's an idea that the community wants um, we have to check what strings are attached to it uh, what it's going to cost us in the long run um, I'm thinking long term, 5, 10, 20 years down the road. And uh, so I'm just looking for answers to improve Burlington and, and make it a place that we can all be proud of to, to call it our home and to have businesses and uh, recreation and, and things to do here. Um, something for everybody. He, we do the stuff on the, he's got the south side locked down for the, uh, the block party. Uh, maybe we should do one on the north side. And that sounds like a great idea. Um, other than that, volunteering uh, is something that drives me. I like to be part of the schools and, and part of the public and, uh, and just be part of everything that's going on around me. So that's mostly why I want to do what, what, I'm, what we're doing. Great. Thank you, Robert. Uh, Bill. My name is Bill Maupin. I'm a lifelong resident of Burlington. I'm proud to call this place my home. Uh, I've always wanted to run for city council. Uh, to be of service somehow. Uh, for many years when I was an educator down in Fort Madison, that wasn't something I could do at that time. So this is an opportunity now that I'm working here in Burlington that I can try to give back to my community, um, try to offer some, some suggestions, some help in any way I can, uh, and to be part of a team that is, is, is Burlington. Um, I, I think this is a, a wonderful place to live. Uh, we have a lot of great things going for us, but we have some stuff we have to work on too. So that's the reason I decided that I would like to run it this time. Great, thank you, Bill. Christopher. I'm Christopher Repke. I've lived here in Burlington since uh, January of 1994. So, and uh, live basically on the south side of town. Um, one of the reasons I wanna run uh, for city council is I think over the years and things have been done th that we need more focus on our older neighborhoods you're starting to see some issues in them and that happens with older neighborhoods uh, not because of people or anything it's just the, kind of the nature of cities and we need to put more emphasis on them streets uh, communities uh, com the community as a whole housing and that will help the whole city in a whole as a whole I mean, the city has faced over the years, since I've been here since 94, companies have left that have hurt the wage base, which does not help. So you somehow, working with the city council, uh, working with uh, the other organizations, uh, Chamber of Commerce and that, to bring, again, more business back to the city. 
So we want the, I'd like to see the city improve overall, all areas. It's just not, the city is not just downtown, it's not just North Hill, it's not just South Hill, it's just not the West neighborhoods, it's the city as a whole. And it needs to be a concentration for the whole city. Thank you. Great. Thank you, Christopher. Uh, next question, and Bill, we'll start with you on this one. If elected, what unique skill set or expertise will you bring, and how will you leverage that experience and expertise for the betterment of Burlington? Um, for 32 years, I've been involved in education. The last 22, I've been involved in administration. Um, so I believe I have the leadership skills. Um, I know what it's like to work with a budget and to prioritize what we think we need uh, for the city and then look at how we're going to fund that. Um, in schools, this is something that happens every single day. Um, it's not an endless uh, stream of money. And you have to be able to do that prioritizing. I think I've been pretty good at that. Uh, number two is I think I can, I can listen to people. I can hear both sides of it. But I'm not afraid to take a stand and make a decision. As, as an administrator, you make hundreds of decisions a day. And uh, I, I pride myself on being able to look at, look at sides, listen to people, but then be able to make those tough decisions when it comes down to it. Great. Thank you. Christopher. I bring a lot of, I've been pastor of Concordia Lutheran <coughs> for a long time, 20, since 94, and I was a pastor four and a half years in Nebraska. So I had the leadership skills there. I know how to listen. Um, and, and also when to say, no, you can't do that. And sometimes you have to do that with the city. But you got to work together, and I can work together with people. You just don't always not listen to people. you got to listen to them. And you got to converse with them. And sometimes that takes a long time. It's not just an overnight thing. So I have the patience to do that. My wife says I'm very patient at times <laughs> for certain things. So I'm patient. Um, I have the skills of visiting, and uh, also there's a time, yes, when push comes to shove, where you say, no, we can't do that. We need to do what's better for this. But, and looking, though, not just at one thing, looking at the whole picture, I'm pretty good at that. What's A, B, C? What's the ramifications of A, B, C? How does that affect this person and that person? So I have that ability, and I like to do that in looking closely at all items. This not making off-the-cuff decisions. Thank you. Great. Thank you, Christopher. Robert, same question to you. If elected, what unique skill set or expertise will you bring, and how will you leverage that experience for the betterment of Burlington? Uh, well, um, some of you may have read some of the things I've written in the Hawkeye over the last two years. So uh, every Wednesday, I wrote an opinion column. Um, and. A lot of what I shared was stuff that I sat down here at council meetings and learned, and then I shared that with the public. Uh, I had such a, a good response to that, I, I kind of kept on that over the last two years. Uh, I think it's important that we have someone on the council who can explain to the public what it is that we're doing with their tax dollars, uh, why we do something and why we can't. Uh, I know a point of contention, you guys will probably ask about it later, would be like the Tiger Grant or the Cascade Bridge or uh, the flood wall. Um, I'm able to speak to those things and, and tell you where the money came from, um, why we made those decisions, and then uh, I'll also tell you what, why we can't, or if you want it, uh, like the Cascade Bridge, what strings are going to be attached. Um, that's, you know, we'd have to probably get a grant of some sort to afford that, or we'd have to budget that in over however many years. So, um, again, I'm thinking with the long term plans, a, a lot of people want things to happen overnight, and they really can't. And I think I'm a great person to explain that to them. I've spent 20 years in the community trying to slowly improve myself, and I think now is a good time for me to give back uh, using the skills I have available. Great, thank you. All right, Christopher, we'll start with you on this one. Uh, what role should the city council have in addressing safety and wellness concerns for both residents and visitors? Well, that's, again, what they budget for police and fire. That is a big concern. Also, I believe, you know, streets, sidewalks, um, ADA, account, you know, makes people. I've seen people riding their wheelchairs on the street, you know, their powered ones, because they can't get up and down the sidewalks. 
You know, they have to ride on the streets. And that, that's really not safe. They need to get somewhere. They need some safe place to do it. So infrastructure improvement is a big thing. Um, also, keeping the neighborhood safe, police help with that. But it needs not a bully whip. It needs to be a community, working with the community and encouraging that with police and fire. Because otherwise, if you're just sitting on a neighborhood or sitting on a community, that doesn't do any good because it's just become something that's negative. It's not a positive. You want police and fire to be a positive in the city rather than negative. So to work on those type of things. And it's a long process. This doesn't happen overnight. It takes time. So, but those are some of the things that make things safer, and you got to work over it over a long time period. Thank you, Robert. All right, safety and wellness. Uh, I believe that we should have well lit neighborhoods. Um, we can participate in that ourselves by leaving some lights on, so to speak. Um, if there are areas that are a little dark, um, the police are usually aware of them, but. Um, we need to get a light up, we just talk to Alliant and we work that out. Uh, as for who's paying for it, it it's great if the uh, resident can do that for us to take the burden off the city, but there are times when the, the taxpayer will pay for that. Uh, I do know the fire department was looking at their response times uh, at one point and noticed that when we were traveling from either downtown or out by the airport, it took so long to get to the west side of town that they moved someone out to uh, public works and for a while we had a relationship with the West Burlington Fire Department where we were able to stay at their station as well. Um, I'm not sure what happened there. I'd like to maybe open up those lines of communication there and maybe get someone back out there if we haven't done so already. Um, but I, I think that's important too, that, we, um, that we're able to help our police and fire departments uh, work with the public, that we develop that relationship where like uh, Chris said, you know, it's, we're not cracking the whip, so to speak. We're, um, building a, a level of trust with them where we can go to them and feel comfortable uh, approaching them and telling them what our, our needs are and that if we see something in the community that needs to be addressed that they'll be there for us and we don't have to worry about speaking up so um, th I think those are a couple things we can do to help safety and wellness. Great. Bill, what role should the City Council have in addressing safety and wellness concerns for residents and visitors? Number one, um, I believe that the priority or the, the main focus of city government should be on uh, the citizen safety and on infrastructure. Uh, with that being said, uh, we need as a council to back our police department and our fire department, um, getting them the resources they need uh, to do their jobs. Um, we need to look at the different uh, infrastructure, uh, talk about, you know, the, the, the person in a wheelchair on the street. We need to look at the sidewalks. We need to do everything like that. I know I worked on a grant down in uh, Fort Madison. It was a Safe uh, Routes to Schools grant where uh, somebody came in and actually uh, paved sidewalks for them to use. So these are some things that we have to do. But um, going back to the, the safety of the community, I think that is, is something that we have to do. We have to focus in on that, and we have to give our firefighters and our police department the resources they need. And it might mean looking at the budget and creating the funds to do that. Great. Robert, we're back to you to start. Sure. What role should local government play to create an environment that would grow our population? Okay. Um, <clears throat> So I just wanted to follow up with the ADA compliance thing. That, that was a government mandate, and we're working on the sidewalks, and that's a long-term project. So the little things that look like Legos that are truncated, uh, those will be going in, and hopefully we see some improvement in the older neighborhoods on those sidewalks. Uh, local government's role, uh, I believe, is just to be part of it. Um, we're kind of ambassadors for the community. We're that, that go between um, your ideas and then making them happen. And if we don't know what's going on out there, um, then what are we doing up here? Um, so part of the reason when I was writing that I never wanted to be a reporter was I couldn't help but be part of the story. Um, so I want to make a difference. I want to have a, a circle of influence around me everywhere I go. And I think that's important for these council members to do that too, that they, um, you know, I see Linda out in the community. I've seen Shane, I've seen John. Um, just to give examples, uh, 
they're out there doing stuff. When I did the bridge run, um, guess who was at the finish line waiting for me? And I think it's important uh, to promote those kind of things and silly umbrella hats uh, to, to bring people together. And uh, he's not even paying attention. That's all right. <laughs> so, um, but just being part of it, uh, the other thing we can do is um, volunteer. So like, you know, I do the Grimes PTO thing and um, I don't intend on stopping anything else that I'm doing if I make it to council. Okay. Bill, what role should the local government play to, cre to create an environment that would grow our population? Well, if the city government is doing the job it's, it, it should be doing, um, the, the population will hopefully grow anyway because it's going to be bringing in those industries. It's going to be bringing in those people that want to be in the community. Uh, they're going to be coming here from, for work. They're going to be coming here uh, to live. I've had a lot of friends that have moved away, come back here to raise their families, started businesses. So if, if, if the council is doing um, you know, what it needs to be doing, hopefully that will continue. Now, with that being said, I also remember when I was growing up, there were 34,000 people in Burlington. Now it's less than 25,000. Um, why is that? Oh, there's a lot of reasons. Um, and I don't know how much control the actual city government can take and, and to bring you know, big numbers back. But if we create an environment where people are happy, where there are opportunities for jobs, there's a good education systems, uh, I believe people will move back here. I've seen people move back here. And the one thing I've, I've told a lot of people, uh, you know, in my job when I've been interviewing new parents moving into town, they really like this community. We have to really plug that and show how important and how good the community really is. Same question, Christopher. First of all, people need to feel safe. And if they feel safe, then they feel positive about the city. It was interesting when I first moved to town, somebody said I had to take a trailer to Angular Street down Angular in Maine. And he said, oh, that's a bad neighborhood, the person I was talking to. I said, really? I never saw it to be a bad neighborhood. So um, being from where, growing up in of Chicago, being in St. Louis and those type of things for a while. But again, people, you want to put, what is the value of the city? Put the positive aspects and make those positive aspects improve on them. Um, housing needs to be, support housing. For example, we're kind of in a system where the older neighborhoods' values are declining. So if you want to draw people, they're going to worry about what is their value of their house. If they're putting money into it, are they going to get that money out later when they retire or they move? That's a concern for people. And safety. You have to improve on that. How do you do that? That takes a lot of discussion with police, with fire, with city staff. It's no easy system, but it's working together as a whole to say, hey, the city as a whole, we, let's pr produce value, let's seek jobs to make the city a better place. Great. Uh, Bill, we'll start with you on this one. One of the most difficult decisions you might have to make as a city council person will be budgetary. Which will matter more to you, protecting services or cutting taxes, and why? If the services are police protection, then I would have to go with the police protection. I think over the next few years, taxes are going to go down anyway, and I think we can make that happen. But the services that the uh, city is providing right now are essential. Um, the public safety is, is the big thing. And if it has to come down to whether we can maintain a police force, recruit officers in, um, with the fire department, that grant's going to be coming up, how are we going to fund that? I would really have to look at keeping those services rather than, than starting with a tax cut. Um, I'm all for, for tax cuts. I, I, I think we are too high in the amount of tax cuts, but I think to cut taxes right now would be a detriment to the overall plan and, and where we need to go. Would you be okay with raising taxes if it was needed to cover those services you mentioned? I think we have to look at the budget. 
Um, I, I don't think raising taxes, but I think there's probably places um, in the budget that we can uh, divert funds over, uh, maybe make some uh, you know, changes in, in, in the long range plans. Um, so that's the way I would go first. Great, thank you. Christopher. You gotta stick with the public safety. If you start cutting public safety, that brings people to worry about what is happening in the city. Is the city safe? Is, am I gonna have an ambulance here if I need it in time or to police here in time? So cutting taxes right now, especially with the safer grant coming to an end, is probably not going to be possible. Adding to them, no. It's never easy to make budget decisions, but we all make them in our own house. And sometimes you gotta do without things that you would like to have. And that's what sometimes you have to do in a city, but you have to prioritize. What is most important? What is most effective? Adding to the tax rate, no, it's, it's high already. And we need to kind of watch that to get it down if we can. But high tax rates, it drags on the, it drags on the society and on, on the community. So you gotta make those hard decisions. And it comes with discussion, looking at the budget and saying, no, we can't spend money on that. And sometimes that's hard, it makes people mad, but we do it in our own lives too. No, I can't spend money on that. Thank you. Thank you. Robert, same question. One of the most difficult decisions you might have to make as a city council person will be budgetary. Which will matter more to you, protecting services or cutting taxes? Um, things are tight. Um, and we weren't in the best financial shape not so many years ago. Um, we've got a great city manager now in Jim Furnell. And, um, and I think we're heading in the right direction. Uh, obviously, I'd want to protect our services. I don't, I don't want to give up anything that we already have and that we've been working for. Um, realistically, I don't know if cutting taxes uh, is an option without sitting through the budget. And I believe that those decisions are made and finalized in February. We start looking in November and go till February. Um, sometimes you have to listen to people like uh, Leon Shahan, though, and, and he's usually got an earful for us. And, he tells us and he looks at these numbers himself so we have some resources in the community we have people that are um, concerned enough to check it out for themselves and and sometimes you have to listen to them and you may not agree and it may not be possible but um, I, I like how he goes digging for stuff to to pull out of there to save us some money long term um, if he shows me what he's looking at I'd be happy to look with him uh, and, and see if there's some spots where we can save money but um, it is a big budget we have a lot of uh, things that I think that we need to keep the police department and the fire department I think are running kind of thin as it is I know they have some overtime concerns uh, at, at times of the year so um, I don't want to take any money away from them w uh, to balance that would you be okay with the potential of having to raise tax if there wasn't enough to cut I'd be hesitant to raise taxes because okay. I know it's a, a financial hardship on everybody, but if, it's, um, if the public wants that for a certain project and they're okay with it, I'm not gonna tell you that you can't spend your money, but I'm gonna caution you against it and tell you what strings are attached. Real quick, a five second answer or less, what is one area that you think could be cut to pay for some of the services that you all said you wanted to protect? Bill, we'll go with you quick. Um, I would look at the uh, parks and recreations and see areas there. Okay, great, Christopher. Boy, that's I. Th I'd like to. I don't. I haven't seen looked at the budget. I think you need to look at it and see what is the priority for the cities because we got great parks here. You don't just want to start cutting them because that's a draw to the city. So you got to look at the whole picture. And I haven't had a chance to really look at the budget, so okay. I can't say. Robert, I, I don't know what I'm willing to give up at this point, okay. guys. I'm, <laughs> You tell me. <laughs> uh, all right, well, let's, uh, Christopher, we'll start with you on this one. In your opinion, what is the biggest issue facing the city of Burlington, and what would you like to see as the council's response? And if you can give a specific policy uh, idea, that'd be great. I think spending money in other areas other than the older neighborhoods. They need it. The streets need it. Central Avenue is terrible from south to uh, angular it's terrible I avoid that as much as I can 
again, this is where you start building value. Start putting it back in the older neighborhoods. Stop saying, okay, we're going to put money into the recplex area. I think that has enough. Yes, it's a draw for people, but how long can you draw people to the city if your older neighborhoods are not doing well and the streets aren't doing well, the infrastructure is not doing well? So you need to build that up, and it's a long process. Nothing's going to happen overnight. It didn't take one year to get here. It took a long time to get issues all cities have, and they always have them. And it doesn't take one year or one month to get out of it. It takes a long time and a lot of dedicated work. Is there a specific policy idea, though, and, and when you get on the board that you want to see that would help, help achieve that? My, I would like to see a plan looking at each of the older neighborhoods and a long-term plan on how we can make improvements in all these neighborhoods with the citizens so that people in each of the neighborhoods are saying, yes, we have value, we have importance, the city cares, and that brings more people in. Great, thank you. Robert, same question. In your opinion, what is the biggest issue facing the city of Burlington, and what would you like to see as the council's response? And again, if any specific uh, policy um, ideas would be great. Right now, I think the, uh, the Cascade Bridge is kind of hanging over all our heads. Um, I think we need to look at, I think it's beyond repair. I think that we looked at the numbers and uh, for maintenance purposes, it would just cost too much to maintain it. If we did repair it, it's an old steel, I believe they called it a, a Baltimore truss bridge. Um, so everything's underneath. Um, I, I don't know that it's, um, that, that we can fix it and maintain it. So it's on the historical register. I think that we'd have to spend some money to get it off of there. And I, I know, I, I don't want to spend money, but I, I think it's a has to there. And then I think we probably need to look at demolishing it and then consider what we want to have, uh, a new bridge or a footpath or nothing at all. Um, and obviously I'm going to need the public's uh, input on that. I know some people have been very vocal that live right on top of the bridge that would love to use it again. Other people feel that it's a, a lifeline to our parks. And uh, I, I, I agree with that, that um, I think there was more park traffic <clears throat> before. But um, we've also gone so long without it. So um, when we're talking about things to cut, if we are hurting financially, that would be the first thing that I'd, I'd pump the brakes on it. And uh, I'd have to say that I, I don't think that it's a good idea at this time. And I know that we're tired of hearing that conversation, but I, I think we need to have a real serious uh, discussion about it. So. Great. Bill, same question. What's the biggest issue facing the city, and uh, what's a policy idea to solve it? I think the biggest issue still is public safety. Um, I think the citizens of Burlington are concerned about the violence that's going on. Um, I think the, the policy, as you, you say, it, it's not going to be just a policy, but it's going to be a whole community effort. Uh, we are going to have to make tough decisions as far as the budget goes for, for fire and police. Um, we're going to have to get the people involved. I mean, they're the, us in the community, are, we're the ones out there. We're the ones seeing it. Uh, we need to partner up with, with those authorities and, and do something too. Um, so, I mean, I think the, the old neighborhoods are great. Uh, Cascade Bridge is, is an issue, but I think when it comes right down to it, we still have to consider public safety and what we can possibly do to curb the violence that's going on and to support the professionals that we hire to take care of it. So I guess I'll just follow up real quick on that then. And so first month on the council, what does that look like for you? Well, it's going to start with the budget. Okay. I mean, you're going to have to look at the budget. I mean, how many officers are they down now? I've heard anywhere from two to eight. Just um, a moderator, I don't know. So, <laughs> so anyway, that's what we have to do. Yeah. So the very first thing, because we're going to be starting, it's going to be right in budget season. We got to look at that. Great. Thank you. Uh, Robert, ready to start with you. Sure. Um, in recent years, retail and dining options have expanded throughout the community. Uh, these additions have helped build quality of life, and some believe increasing tourism is a great way to sustain a vibrant retail and community sector. Um, first question is, do you agree with that? Um, and 
what are the opportunities to expand visitor traffic? So 100% agree that, uh, that there's some opportunities there to bring people into our city. And I think that when they're spending their money at our hotels and motels and using our gas stations and our restaurants, that takes some of the burden off of us. We'll, we'll bring visitors in and, and let them pay for some of the things that we wanna do. I think this Tiger Grant's amazing. I think that what we're gonna do for Jefferson Street in the downtown area as far as growth it is great. I, I like the idea of calling it the Snake Alley Shopping District. Um, I, I think that'd be pretty neat to, to expand on that and use the, the natural um, the sites that we have here, like we have the riverfront and we have Snake Alley and we have some things in our city that draw them in. Um, people come across the bridge and see the churches in the hills and uh, me and Bill have talked about this before. They, it's like driving into a uh, somewhere European. So uh, we have some appeal there, but as far as bringing in new restaurants, we've had, well, we had one on Roosevelt. We had Cole House. We had uh, Good just came down here. Um, wake and bake there's a few others and I, I think that the fact that these business owners are willing to start up and be part of the community that's going to bring jobs it's going to bring entertainment uh, I love the old couch music <clears throat> fest the Washington does music um, steamboat days will be back in 2020 so um, I, I like the possibilities down there for for tourism and bringing people in with that as a follow-up then how do you feel the hotel motel tax should be used as it relates to tourism so uh, I know the RecPlex is a point of contention because, uh, you know, they, they don't operate uh, and, and make a ton of profit, but they are bringing people in that are staying in the hotels and motels. Um, I know whatever agreement we have with the um, Greater Burlington Partnership, um, I, I think they're doing some good, but I would like to dig a little deeper and, and see um, what, what the deal is with them and, and what our... Um, agreement is. So I, I don't really know enough about it to, to know that we're getting the best deal out of it, but right now it seems like they're doing okay. Great. Okay, Bill, this is first on the first part of the question is, is on the, uh, the tourism and, you know, do you agree with the, the vibrant retail bringing tourism dollars to town? I hope it's bringing tourism to dollars to town, but I don't want to rely on the economy somewhere else where those people can afford to come here. I think we have to really grow our economy, um, and I think as we grow our economy, yes, these things are going to take place. We're going to have the recplex, we're going to have the places to eat and, and everything like that, and it is going to bring people in, but I don't want to rely just on, on, on the tourism. Um, I think it is, uh, I, I mean, I've seen people that have, have come here, I, I've had a lot of new teachers that I've interviewed uh, this past couple of years who come to Burlington and they see the great things that that we have here. Um, and they've talked about having a municipal band, they've talked about a golf course, they've talked about the Rexplex, everything like that. So I think all those things are important. So yes, I think the tourism dollars are a wonderful thing. I don't want to just rely on that. As far as the Yep, hotel motel tax. Then, yep, go right to that. I think I think we have to look at that. We have to use some of it to uh, bring that tourism in and everything like that. But we have to look at it for other things too. Great. Same question. It's good to have the retail. We've kind of become a hub, though things have kind of, you know, changed. We're in a changing retail environment. Amazon and all that, and online retailing. So. There, there's a lot we don't know and still yet to come down the pike that affects retail in town. So don't put all your ba eggs in that basket. Um, safety is one thing. If people want to come somewhere, they want to feel safe. And when you get bad news <clears throat> reports on the news, sooner or later people start saying, eh, go to Iowa City, I'll go to somewhere else because of the safety issue. So we, again, and you know, I've mentioned a lot about older neighborhoods, but if you work on the older neighborhoods, then you have more retail customers, you have the city feeling you know, value with it, your neighbors, they will go down and shop downtown. You need more than just people coming in. You need the base of the residents to spend the money. If they're not spending their money downtown, if they're not spending in the restaurants, it becomes problematic because all your way is from one big problem 
where people say, well, I'm not going to go to Burlington anymore. And how do you feel on the hotel motel tax as it I, relates to tourism? It needs to be looked at where it's, how it's spent, what the money is. I'd like to see a better breakdown of where, how it's spent and where it's going. It is a value uh, to use to bring more people in. You just want to, you, you don't want to spend a tax and not get any value out of it. You want to try to get value out of it. If you spend a dollar, you want a dollar of value. And I think that needs to be looked at. What value is the city getting from the money it's spending out of the hotel? motel tax is it bringing in what we're thinking or does it need to be tweaked so it can reach out into a different area and that's a conversation that this does not happen with city council it happens with the chamber the business leaders it's just not one person five people in the council making decision it's a come it's a community effort thank you great um Staying on the tourism uh, beat, Bill, we'll start with you on this one. What are your thoughts regarding the proposed hotel development along the riverfront? Um, I haven't seen all the plans, but just thinking about it, I'm, I'm, I'm not for it. Uh, I'm going to reserve judgment until I see what, the, what they have. Um, I, I know I saw one picture of it, and it's kind of like, well, you're not going to have a river view anymore from you know certain areas of town. Um, so right now, if, if I had to make a decision without having anything, right now I'd say no. Okay. I would like to see some other, you know, yes, I'd like to see a hotel downtown, but maybe using one of the older buildings, doing some uh, remodeling, restructuring like that, but not new construction down on the riverfront. Christopher, same question. Again, as, he, as Bill said, see the plans. I want to see what it is. What is the cost to the city? Uh, what are they expecting the city to kick in, if anything? What does it mean if all of a sudden they start building, they build, they're there a couple of years, and then, oh, this is not working, we're leaving. Are we going to get an abandoned hotel on the riverfront? Something we don't need. We don't need to take care of another abandoned building. Um, so I'd like to see the plants, the, the, you see what all the details are, and... Uh, Otherwise, you can't make a really decision. You need to know what's the cost, what's the city's responsibility, uh, what is the plan overall, what, and see if it's viable. Robert? All right. Um, obviously, I'd be willing to listen um, and see what the plans are. Um, I don't know that that's the ideal spot for a hotel, so um, I, too, would probably prefer to use an older building or a, a spot. Um, I know parking's an issue, so that would use up some parking spots, but then they talked about putting a parking garage on the south side of the Memorial Auditorium. Uh, if the plan was to include the Memorial Auditorium and with the building and uh, develop it in a, in a way that we would use it more often or be more cost effective, I'd be open to that idea. But uh, I really think this is something you just need to sit down and, and hash out the details and see what it is that what their plans are and, and how it's going to help Burlington. Um, if, it, if it can't help us, uh, I would probably also say no to that. So I'll just take your answers as this is something you wouldn't mind seeing if everything looked great, but nothing that you would at this point be interested in seeing city money go towards. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, yeah. great. Uh, Christopher, we'll uh, go to you. Some of the, still speaking tourism and amenities, some of the city's recreational amenities, including the RecPlex, Memorial Auditorium, and Flint Hills Golf Course, uh, none of them are currently breaking even. Should the city continue to fund these at a loss, and why or why not? The RecPlex, to be honest, when it first came, I didn't think it would ever make money. <laughs> Back when they built it, it been around since 96, I think. It was about somewhere around that time. So it's like, don't expect it to make money, but expect it to bring in the tourism and, and that. And give places for our own kids to have, you know, soccer, softball, and those type of things. So it is a positive. You just don't, but again, you got to look at the budget. How much are you spending? Where can you improve it or that? Or say, okay, we can't expand it. Let's just keep what we have, keep it going, and keep it functioning 
Um, so the parks are right, the golf course is the same thing. I know a couple of years ago there was an offer made, I think, to take it over and, and that. Uh, you gotta look at what the golf course provides and there you might say it's a golf course that fits more an older style player. So I would say keep it, but you gotta look at the cost. What are your costs? How can you get more use out of it? And again, that's where you got to talk with the park people, those who are running it. It's just not a simple decision where you come in and say, well, I'm going to do this. No, you got to listen to the whole story, look at the whole plan, and work on it together. All right, let's repeat the question, Joel. Yep. We're, we're putting everybody to sleep. <laughs> no problem. <laughs> yeah. Some yeah. of the city's recreational amenities, including the RecPlex Memorial Auditorium and Flint Hills Golf Course, are currently not breaking even. Uh, should the city continue to fund them at a loss, and why or why not? Okay, well, it sounds really bad when you say we're funding them at a loss. Um, well, they're not so, making money. How do you? <laughs> yeah. Heard it anyway. Yeah. It, well, that, it does sound bad. So um, we're bringing money in other ways, though. Like, so we've mentioned the hotel motel uh, tax. People are coming and staying at our hotels and eating our food in our restaurants uh, when they come to Burlington to use those amenities. Um, I agree that we have to have some public support of it as well, and we should use them. But um, bringing people in from out of town and making them part of it is what's going to help us. So the RecPlex uh, soccer players come from all over uh, when they do like the the monster match and and the Halloween matchups. The YMCA is out there using it. My girls both play soccer. Uh, I coached a lot of soccer teams out there, and uh, I've been in the bubble, and the girls love it. And uh, I think that we need to give it a, a chance to grow a little bit before we uh, we cut it off. Uh, as far as the golf course goes, we had a, a rainy summer um, and it kind of cut into playtime. Uh, I think that really we just need to do a better job of promoting what we have. Uh, I'm going to be honest, I didn't know that golf course was out there until about five years ago. Um, I was delivering pizzas and someone ordered one out there and I had no idea. I knew about the one on Sunnyside and I knew about Spirit Hollow. Um, so I, I think maybe we just need to advertise what we have and, and share that with the public. Bill. I think some of the stuff that we have, we're going to fund at a loss simply because it is a service to our community and it does bring in <laughs> dollars in and everything like that. Um, and I think, you know, uh, if we looked at the entire thing, um, maybe it doesn't lose as much as what we're looking at when, when you consider the hotel motel tax, you think about the, the people coming in to eat and everything like that. Um, I was on the golf course advisory board years and years ago, and, uh, it was a couple of years, the only thing in the city of Burlington that made money. Um, it was back when we had some, uh, some great years with weather. Um, I've been playing that golf course since I was five, so it's going to be 50 years this year. Yes, I'm old. Um, <laughs> but, um, and so, I mean, I think, I think we have to realize that, yeah, we have these big things that we want to do, but there's also some things that are, are very important to the community. Um, it brings people in, but it also makes Burlington Burlington. Um, so I think that's an important thing to, to think about, and that does have some value that may offset what, what we're putting into it. Okay, just a quick follow-up, and this is more of a head nod for all of you. Imagine the, the current deficits on each of those triple. Same answer? I'm puckering up right now. Um, <laughs> then we have to look at it. you got to look at it. Yeah, you got to look at what, what's going on. you got to look at it. It might be it triples because they had to put something in. You got to look at it. We're okay with some, but not too much, and we just need to figure out where that middle is. Right. Yeah, we put okay. some lighting, I think, out at the the Recplex, and um, I think we got some help with that, if I'm not mistaken. So, and, and you have to look at what's going on in the community. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, is there a, a different priority we have to go with? Mm -hmm. um, the sewer separation project, we don't have much of a choice. <laughs> yeah. Is that the Reading next my question? Notes, oh. it? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so, <laughs> Robert, we'll start with you on this one. So. Uh, there is a lot to pay for in this town. Bridges, roads, sewer improvements, riverfront enhancements, emergency personnel, just the list goes on and on. With the infrastructure improvements alone, we're potentially talking about over $300 million. Um, again, past the sound bites, how are we as a community going to pay for all this? We're going to pay for it. 
Um, we probably should have started earlier, um, but that's neither here nor there. It's time now, and, and we've just got to grind on it. Um, I know our water bill is going to go up uh, a certain percentage every year until the sewer is paid for. Um, it has to be done. It's not a, a wants to, it's a has to. So those are some of the things that we really just can't spend a lot of time fighting about. Um, as far as the roads, we have a five-year plan, um, and they constantly evaluate what it is that needs to be done. And I think that uh, Nick does a good job over there in public works looking at that, and his crew is really good. Um, I don't think that we're wasting money fixing certain things, uh, potholes or whatever. I, I don't think we're just filling them with gravel, which is a misperception. Uh, I think they're doing it the right way, and uh, there's just certain spots that wear down faster. A lot of the uh, overpass traffic wears on the roads. So um, as far as the what we're paying for, um, it, it, anything that has to be done has to be done. The, I mentioned the um, the ADA compliant sidewalks. It's part of what needs to be done. Now with the Tiger Grant, we can cover some of that downtown area with that and use that money wisely uh, and get two birds with one stone. So I would look for opportunities like that where we can use some of the money we've been granted and, and do something good with that to cut costs somewhere else. Bill, same question. $300 million, where's it coming from? That's a good question. Um, we're going to have to roll up our sleeves. We're going to have to do it. The uh, current council has done a real good job at trying to get the sewer separation project pushed off. Uh, I know we're in a lot better place uh, as far as that goes than other communities. Um, yeah, could we start it sooner? Probably. But it, it's something that has to be done. Taking that all into consideration, um, the current council and the, and the next council, they are going to have to sharpen their pencils they're going to have to look at things. Um, they're going to have to do the job and make those tough decisions. Um, it's not much different than um, in schools when we need textbooks, we need this, we need that. Technology is, you know, growing like we would not believe we can't even keep up. Um, you got to look at what has to be done, what is good for the community, and go that way. So when you say, you know, $300 million, you know, that's a daunting task, um, but this community can do it. Christopher? It's not going to happen overnight. <laughs> You're not going to. And the big thing is the sewer separation. And that will always be continuing, even after you get them all separated. There's still going to be issues. There's still going to be cost. Because it's infrastructure not seen, and nobody wants to pay, spend money on infrastructure not seen. It's buried in the ground, and you think it's okay, and it's and it's not, and it's an expensive. So that's covered again when you talk about taxes and budgets. That is an enterprise fund that's a separate, you know, comes from a different pile of money, but you still need to look at it and be conservative with it. What can you spend and what can you get the most money from? And it might mean with the infrastructure, you can't put in what you want. You can put on something that meets the purpose but you can't do all that you want. You're going to have to say, yeah, we need this new. We can't afford what we want, but we can afford that. It's kind of like, can you, can you afford a Cadillac or can you afford a Chevy? Well, we can afford the Chevy, we'll buy the Chevy. You know, Cadillac would be nice, but I can't afford, we can't afford the Cadillac. So you're going to have to prioritize. If you, you can't do everything you want to do. You just got to say, I can do this, we'll do that with the money involved. And it's, again, working with everybody, not just the council. So a follow-up to that quickly, then. When would it be okay to, well, how do we pay for it? Someone mentioned higher usage fees. Is there, when is it okay to raise taxes, or is it truly pay for this from cutting elsewhere? That's a hard question. Uh, you know how you eat an elephant, right? Just one bite at a time. Mm -hmm. um, I don't have a good answer uh, without looking at numbers. Um, obviously, we don't want to raise our taxes. We don't want to pay more. If it's a necessity to keep this community alive, okay. But I don't want to drive people away, and I, I still want them to come live here in Burlington. So, um, you know, you have to look at it. I, I don't know what we can cut right now uh, without looking at it. And $300, $300 million is 
a mind-boggling amount of money for me. I, I, I don't even think I can comprehend it until I see how big that stack of paper is and what we actually spend dollars on. So if there is some waste in there and there's somewhere to cut it, let's cut it. But if this is where we're at, then we need to figure out how to make do with what we have. Um, when you said sharpen his pencil, tighten our belts. Um, I don't have cable and I drive a piece of crap car. Um, <laughs> I can't afford a car payment. I can't afford cable. So, um, okay. you know, I, we make sacrifices. But where would you ideally like to see it? Just in cuts then instead of usage or increased taxes? People drag their feet about a usage fee. Are you talking about like a franchise fee? E either way, just either higher water bills passed on or uh, well, even over 30 years, 10 million a year isn't going to come from a sharpened pencil. You're right. So yeah, it's, it's going to probably have to stay on our water bill. Anybody that pays a water bill is going to see that percentage of increase every year. And, and we've looked at those numbers before and they're trying to uh, make that transi transition as easy on us as they can. Um, mm -hmm. Jim Furno talked about it a few times about what it's going to look like uh, down the road, and um, no one's going to be happy with it. Um, we do have metered water now, and, and some people, uh, I've had some success with that. I have a bigger house now than I did before, and my water bill's cheaper. So um, I would like people to consider that, that if you want your water bill to go down while it's going up, you might have to look at getting a meter in, um, and that might help you in the long term. Bill? I think you have to look at both. I mean, uh, honestly, is it a want or is it a need? If we have something we have to do and we have to make that tough decision, it could be a, a thing where we cut and we raise. Um, but until I would get in and look at the numbers and, and see everything, I, I can't tell you, but probably both. You can repeat the question. Yeah, so. absolutely. Just. Uh, Looking at that 300 million bill, how do we pay for it? Is it pay, going to be paid for from usage, paid for from increased taxes, or just truly from cuts? Um, Some, sometimes saying no to things that you would want and saying we can't do it. Uh, and putting that money made toward that infrastructure things, roads, bridges. Did we need, do we need a new road to the recplex? No. You know, I think that's a million eight hundred thousand dollars plus grant money now with the grant money that means you're stuck with the road having to maintain it for at least 20 years um getting you know so again you, you got to say no to some of that yes we would like it it would be nice oh we're getting some money so it doesn't cost as much no that eight hundred thousand can go to something else more needed more priority in the city and i guess it comes down to priorities what is a priority what is needed so again, you're gonna to have to say no to things. From cuts then is where you- From would... cuts and not doing things you wanna do and saying, hey, we gotta put it here in the older area rather than building something brand new. But wouldn't want to see increase in usage or property taxes then? Well, you're gonna get, the sewer bureau is gonna go up because you gotta pay the loans for the sewer okay. separation. And they keep on adding money because you have to. The federal government says you gotta do this and they're making you do it. It's, what can you do? I mean, unless you can change the federal government's mind, what are you gonna do? Yeah. You know, they're holding it to you. It's kind of like, if you wanna drive your car, you're gonna have to pay for your license plate, so. Great. Well, again, I wanna thank people for coming. Um, we're gonna have closing statements and uh, just please really share with, in your, share with us in your closing statement what sets you apart from the other candidates. Uh, Christopher, I believe it's time to start with you on this Okay, one. I want to see, again, I know it's kind of a mantra, but start more focus on some of the older, on older neighborhoods. There are, they are your lifeblood of your city. If they start going down, no matter what you do in newer stuff, it's not going to bring, it's not going to save, save you, if you will. It's not going to improve you. Yeah, you could throw a lot of money downtown. Oh, we got a great downtown. But if nobody wants to go to the downtown because they have to go through neighborhood streets and areas that they don't feel safe to go through, you're not going to accomplish anything. Uh, Cascade Bridge has been an issue. Um, I'd like to, you know, again, I think we have a lot to do on that. But again, you know, people talk about grant money. Well, yeah, it'd be nice, but... If you can put a bridge up there, $1 million, I'm just throwing it off the top of my head, you know, a pedestrian walking bridge 
or you can get a, a grant that's going to, and then you've got to match it with $3 million. Eh, let's save the money and put the $1 million bridge in and not the $3 million, you know, what it would cost us. So all these decisions need to be made. They're not easy. But again, if you want the city, older neighborhoods, stop the declining value of property, people will start putting the money in. If you want to buy a house and you think, is that house going to be worth what I paid for it five years from now? Okay. They're not going to want to do it. Thank you. All right, Robert. Um, I would love to see us act as a community. I, I would like to see us all come together and make some good things happen. Um, I would like to see some of those people that are excited about being here. I would, I'd like to see them have the opportunities that they're seeking, uh, whether it's with the school board and the school district, whether it's on Burlington City Council, whether it's a small business owner. I, I don't care. If you love Burlington, we're on the same team. Um, as far as what sets me apart, I'm very approachable. Uh, I'm accessible. I was talking with people on Facebook all day long uh, that were asking me questions or uh, there's some naysayers on there too and I said if you if that's what you want to do give me some ideas and one guy said he was too conservative to to present his ideas and I said you don't know that until you try so I think he's just messing with me um, we do have a perception problem here we have an, an image issue in our community where um, they, they think that violence is out of hand if you talk to the police chief he'll tell you that that crime is actually down um, we've just had some real um, terrible things happen that, that drew the wrong kind of attention to our community. And I, I think that, um, you know, we, we've talked to some of these folks from Chicago that said they came here because they feel safer in Burlington. Uh, and these are productive people that have jobs that are doing good things. So um, I would caution you against stereotyping groups of people. I, w I would caution you as, as dividing the community. Uh, in certain ways, I think that we all should come together. Uh, I know I'm going to go over my time here, yep. but I love that he's doing the South Hill <laughs> thing thank over you. there. <laughs> all right, Bill. Well, thank you for hosting us, and thank you, Chris and, and Robert. Uh, it's great being up here with you guys and sharing ideas. Um, I guess if, if I go back to uh, my my experience and and being uh, a leader and and dealing with budgets making those hard choices and those decisions. Um, not gonna make everybody happy, totally understand that. Um, that's, that's just part of the leadership position. Um, I've always wanted to be on council. Um, I've, I've heard the good things that people coming in from out of town are saying, um, and bringing that realization to our community about how great a town we really do have but then also facing those tough, those tough situations with the budget, with the public safety and with the infrastructure and really focusing in, learning to, you, you can't have that approach where you're gonna solve this problem, this problem, this problem, this problem. You gotta really prioritize on, on the problem you want to, to look at, to, to focus on, work on that, get that solved, then move on. And that's something I think I've had a lot of experience with and it'd just be an honor if, uh, if I was elected to the council. All right. Well, I wanna thank each of you for your interest in serving on the Burlington uh, City Council. Uh, public service is often a thankless job and we definitely need dedicated individuals like yourselves to serve. Uh, I wanna thank the Greater Burlington Partnership and its Government Relations Committee for hosting the event. I wanna thank Vince for uh, keeping track of the time and staring you down when you went over there as well. <laughs> uh, I wanna thank all those in the audience here and those who've been watching, watching and or listening at home for your interest in the city council election. Uh, please vote for the candidates of your choice on Tuesday, November 5th. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you.